To begin our presentation, we will inform you the difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. Then we will progress to the benefits of incorporating Web 2.0 into a business strategy. At the end, with some examples of existing companies and their use of Web 2.0 and other ideas that can also be taken advantage of. Before we begin with the benefits of Web 2.0, we shall explain the difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. With Web 1.0, the webmaster is always burdened with the responsibility of updating the website to keep visitors informed and engaged. Today, users are looking for not just information. Technology is transforming into Web 2.0, where the webmaster shares its responsibility with the internet audience, keeping the website informative and engaging. The web now is becoming a dynamic place where people can interact with each other, as you can see with the increase in its global users. We are now going to look at an example of how the web was modified from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0. Our example is Britannica Online and Wikipedia. Britannica Online is considered as a Web 1.0 website because the webmaster is in full control and is the only person who can update the website. It is a one-directional flow of information. On the other hand, Wikipedia is a Web 2.0 website, as all the articles on the website have been written by volunteers all over the world. Even their slogan is, the free Wikipedia that anyone can edit. Now that you understand the difference between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0, we will move on to the benefits of harnessing it for your company. The benefits of using Web 2.0 don't only lie with using other websites such as YouTube, Flickr, LinkedIn but also updating your own website to help promote brand awareness and company strategy. Our first example of a company using Web 2.0 is Apple and its use of RSS feeds and podcasts to make it more convenient for customers to interact with its brand. Really Simple Syndication or RSS is exploited by Apple to make news, promotions and iTunes hit lists accessible by everyone by using a standardised format. It can be used to make blog entries, news headlines, audio and video easier to access for millions of users. Apple also makes use of podcasting to give consumers the option to interact with their brand while on the move via such devices as iPods and iPads. Our next example is Coca-Cola and their use of other 2.0 websites such as Twitter, Facebook and YouTube to their advantage. Coca-Cola's use of Twitter has aided them in making consumers constantly aware of their promotions and giving them the chance to interact with Coca-Cola itself and give feedback on their various products and upcoming Coke events through followers' mobile phones and laptop computers. Another Web 2.0 method is Coke's use of social networking site Facebook. Although Coke have their own official Facebook page, they've helped consumers help them by allowing them to make their own Coca-Cola Facebook pages so customers can feel like they are a part of the brand. Coke, like many other companies, utilise YouTube as a source for viral marketing campaigns. Cheaper than advertising on television or radio, consumers can not only view the videos whenever, wherever they want, but can also give Coke feedback through the use of likes and comments directly below the video. Other Web 2.0 methods that can benefit our company are the use of blogs and Ajax. Blogs that are updated daily can create a readership of consumers that helps keep interest in the brand. By having pictures and bios of the writers, it helps give the brand a more friendly and human image. It offers consumers a break from the constant bombardment of advertising while still interesting them in our products. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, or AJAX for short, is the art of exchanging data with a server and update parts of a web page without having to press the refresh button. This can be used by our company to keep customers constantly up to date with everything you want them to know on your web page in real time. Mm -hmm.